Welcome to this episode of Extravagant Generosity, where we reflect on how the practice of generosity impacts our communities, touches our hearts, and works for a more just world. My name is Andrew Warner, Generosity Outreach Officer for the National Setting of the United Church of Christ. I'm joined by Tracy Blackman, Associate General Minister, Justice and Local Church Ministries for the United Church of Christ. Tracy, when I engage in generosity, I often experience an indwelling of hope giving, whether it's volunteering, financial support, or solidarity, often makes me feel more hopeful. I've come to think of generosity as the stewardship of hope. I'm wondering, in your work with justice and local church ministries, and your work as a local pastor, what connection do you see between generosity and hope? Thank you for having me on, Andrew. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you to ponder these things that are so important in the church, especially at this time uh, when we're seeing a new awakening of people in not just our church, but in the world. Um, I am witnessing displays of hope in protest um, that are not happening just locally, but are happening globally. I'm witnessing displays in hope of hope in our churches that continue to contribute to efforts uh, like the annual fund and the RIP medical debt forgiveness um, and neighbors in need in the midst of churches sheltering in place and not being in their buildings. Uh, hope for me represents the belief that something better is coming, something greater is in the future. And I relate that to generosity because generosity for me is an act of hope. Uh, we give lavishly and abundantly without regard because we know that something good is coming um, and that we don't have to be fearful uh, with our resources or act out of a theology of scarcity because we know uh, that whatever we're able to do, if we do it with open hands and open hearts, um, that not only will it benefit us, but it will benefit those around us. Um, I, I think often of a story that had to do with our RIP campaign locally here in St. Louis. Uh, Christ the King, United Church of Christ, the church that I pastor, was involved in raising money for RIP. Um, and we did that in conjunction with the Missouri Mid-South Council. Several churches from uh, our conference uh, participated as well as with the Deaconess Foundation, which is also an, an aspect, an expression of the United Church of Christ. Uh, together, we raised $104,000. So we were able to forgive or abolish a little bit over $12 million in debt uh, for families in our region, which was incredible. And after the news conference, one of the young ladies in my church who doesn't make a lot of money, um, you know, works for minimum wage and not a living wage, came up and said, she was so proud, and she said, my $5 a week helped this happen, right? Uh, and when you're looking at $104,000 and someone comes up and says, my $5, my $5 a week made a difference, it just made my heart swell because she was right. Without her $5 a week, we never would have gotten to $104,000. And who knows how many other people we had who gave $5 a week or $10 a week. Certainly some people gave thousands and hundreds of dollars. But the moral of the story is that it took all of us to get to where we where we ended up. And um, that spirit of generosity, no matter what one's context is or what one's situation is, is an expression, a tangible expression of hope. Um, so I just finished a, a, in an interview right before you where someone asked me, what is hope? And I was unable to give a definition. I could only give examples, right? Uh, this is where I see hope. But if you want me to articulate in a few words, this is what hope is. It's too big for that, right? Um, and so one of the greatest expressions of hope is our generosity, our generosity of spirit um, and our generosity of resources are indications of our belief that better is possible. 
Tracy, I really appreciate what you said, and in particular, the way that you've lifted up the story of a woman in your church. Her gift connected her to other people. And at this time, when we might feel especially isolated or alone because of the pandemic, her story speaks to the ability of generosity to connect us to people and movements, all while we make a difference. But I also really resonate with the way that you defined generosity as an active hope. You said you couldn't define hope, but you've certainly defined generosity. I'm going to hold that in my heart. Generosity as an active hope. I invite people who are watching this video to sit with these questions. How does active hope operate in your life? How does hope connect you to other people? How does hope deepen your relationship to God? Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Andrew.